We had a bit of an accident in the car recently and here is the CCTV footage. My wife was driving, unfortunately she got confused with the gears as she was doing a three point turn in the driveway. The front of the car hit this wooden barrier which pushed the end of the wall and it collapsed. And this is the second time since we moved in that this wall has been hit over. The first time wasn't by one of us, but that time the damage was a lot worse and it had to be rebuilt by a professional. But this time the damage wasn't so bad and the rest of the wall was solid, so we figured we'd try and repair it ourselves. We wanted to reuse the old bricks, so we spent an hour or two in the workshop and most of the old mortar cleaned off fine. I found that using the pointy end of the hammer was the best tool for removing the mortar. And then we can get them all stacked up outside and it's currently about 2 p.m. and we needed to be somewhere at around 6.30 p.m. so we weren't sure if we'd get it done but at least we could make a start especially as we had some lovely weather. Right, so the old pillar was here originally but I wanted to rebuild it further along for a couple of reasons. First, we'd need less bricks and second, it'll mean that the pillar is in a little bit less of a vulnerable position and open up our driveway a bit meaning that hopefully it won't get hit down for a third time. There's this lip of mortar that I need to remove to get a flat base to set the new pillar on. So I used the SDS drill to clean it off. I could use this on the wall too, but I was a bit worried about the vibration. I didn't want it to cause any of the bricks to come loose, but I took it carefully and did manage to get some of it off before resorting to doing some by hand with a bolster and hammer. And it looked like we'd need about five additional bricks, so we popped out to buy some. They won't be a perfect match, but they won't be far off either. This concrete block at the end I'm just going to cut off at roughly 45 degrees with the cutoff saw, which I think will look better and it'll help shed any rain away from the wall. The blade isn't big enough to get through this cut, so I finished off with some tactical hole drilling until it broke off. and then I can just run the edge of the blade across it to clean it up a bit. Then I can mix up the mortar and I'm doing a four building sand to one cement mix using a trowel to measure it out. And then in with some water and I've got this paddle mixer thing that I can use in the drill to mix it up. And then once the consistency is loosened up, I've got some of this integral waterproofer and plasticizer. Just a little drop of this will make the mix more workable. I've heard that some people even use washing up liquid for this. I have no idea if that works as well or not though. And this to me looks just about perfect. To make sure I get a really good strong connection joining the old part of the wall to the new, I'm going to use some wall ties which I had left over from a previous project. I can secure one end of these with a repair washer and screw it into a wall plug and the rest of it will be embedded in the new mortar that gets laid. And I'm going to do this on each course of bricks. As it was a hot day I hosed down the wall which will hopefully buy me a bit more time and stop the bricks sucking all of the moisture out of the mortar too quickly. Then I can start laying the bricks and actually I messed this up on my first attempt. Instead of placing a half brick here on the corner it was meant to be a full brick placed in this direction and then a half brick in this corner. And even though I could have gotten away with it as it was, I found that as I got higher up the wall the spacings were not quite right because that half brick being a bit on the small side was throwing off my spacings. And things were just not lining up right so you can see my head in hands moment here and I ended up taking it all down and starting again and I decided to throw away all of that mortar because it was starting to dry out. And so skipping ahead a bit this is the second attempt and I'm much happier with it this time. And this is when we started finding our rhythm because I could lay the bricks while Rhea could tidy up pointing the mortar lines because we were finding that the mortar was firming up so quickly so if I just concentrated on laying and Rhea concentrated on tidying that seemed to work well. One of the main problems we had with filming this project was the velocity of the speeding vehicles being so strong that it nearly pushed us over. And you'll see that later in the video it completely destroys my brand new camera lens.
wherever I had gaps in the mortar, I could just kind of fling some extra in using the trowel. So, are you ready to see my camera lens get destroyed? Another lens now fitted to the camera and time for the new bricks to be added. It might have been a good idea to mix these up with the old ones to place them more randomly within the wall, but I didn't think of that unfortunately, and it's not the end of the world. Some of the brick spacings were off when tying into the old wall, so I had to cut out a couple of slithers of brick to make up the difference. As it turned out, we were one brick short, but we had plenty of halves left over, so I used two halves at the top. We want to reuse the old coping stones too, but they were broken, so I'm going to cut some clean edges on the ends. And I added more mortar onto the top of the concrete block on the end and shaped it into a bit of an arc just to help shed the water away from the wall. So a few days have passed and I'm pleased to say that the wall is still standing and actually it feels really nice and solid. It took the two of us amateurs about four hours to complete. Is it done to a professional standard? No, absolutely not. But actually if you look at the other end of the wall, which actually looks like it's about to fall over at any minute, I think we've done a decent enough job here. And best of all, it's much less likely to get hit over again in future. In total, we used two bags of building sand and about half a bag of cement. The integral waterproofer and wall ties I already had. But if you're gonna buy all of that stuff, you're probably only gonna be spending about 25 pounds in total. So I reckon we've saved ourselves a couple of hundred quid by doing this work ourselves. Of course, though, I'm not factoring in the cost of a new camera lens into this job. I actually found this job quite tricky though, because you do have to work quickly and a professional bricklayer probably would have had this done in an hour or two. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.